Good morning. Welcome into Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula, and we, we're here on a Thursday, uh, less than 24 hours after a, a pretty chaotic day in the state of Nebraska. Um, DB, how are you feeling this morning? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it was a long day yesterday. Uh, it sure was. So, I mean, there, you know, it's, it's obviously tough. Uh, you got it's a couple of different, uh, aspects to it, right? There's mm-hmm. the, there's the friend. Yeah. Right. Like then there's the man, I, I love my university. Like what's best can i separate those two do i have to separate those two Mm -hmm. and then it's like i have to practice sure enough what i said yesterday right because i said i'm not typically a guy that um looks at potential what could be's and what ifs and on a negative slant Mm -hmm. where i allow that to dictate my thought process Mm -hmm. it was really hard yesterday not to not to fast forward to um potentials down the road yeah with 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 the landscape not only for the university of nebraska but but for um the athletic department so i ran the gamut of emotions and i told trev last night i said you know i'm not I'm not mad mm-hmm. um like that wasn't the that wasn't the first feeling and i still don't i, I still i'm i'm not mad at it you know what I what I think I am is, is I'm I'm pretty disappointed, but I'm disappointed across the board. And listen, eight 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 six three eight four eight seven six. Um, you know we can we can process through it. And, and there's a lot of places to point the finger. Y- yeah, one hundred percent. And and but before it, it's hard to go get a pound of flesh if you're pound of fleshy mm-hmm. without knowing all the details. And I don't think any of us really do. Yeah, right? we don't. We right, don't. right. I, I I think. Um. You know, I think this started, you know, early early Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. ar- around there, early last week, and I think there were one or two people that knew. Okay. Um, I think I think Trev was asked not to go to to College Station on Saturday. Uh, By leadership. Yes. Okay. And and I and I think he went anyway, which, I mean. Yeah. That's his discretion. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't really begrudge him for that. Um, and then, bad news, per usual, would beat you home, yeah. right? So, yeah. um, Houston Chronicle gets it, and then we're off and running. So let's let's kind of go back through the timeline yesterday because uh, you obviously talked to Trev last night at some point via text. Yes. Okay. So. And you can share as little or as much of that conversation as you want. I obviously it'll be very little. That's totally fair. Um, the The timeline yesterday is about nine a.m. Little after, while we're on the air, talking now, to Jacob. We're, talking, we're in the middle of an interview. Yeah, talking to Jacob Padilla. The news comes down from Houston Chronicle that they're the Texas A&M's targeting Trev Alberts and that he's expected to take the job. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing final at that point. It was, you know, not a done deal, but that the ex- expectation was there. And then we have about six hours, five and a half, six hours, where we don't hear much of anything. And the longer it drags on, you kind of start to think, well, maybe, maybe there's, you know, maybe there's a little more wiggle room here for Nebraska than we originally thought. Yeah, I, f- I felt like during that five or six hours, because I, I, I have a decent idea of what was going on, right? Kind of the the posturing, the between leadership and Trev. Yeah, and I wouldn't necessarily say, okay, we'll just say leadership. Um, I mean, do we want to get more specific? No, okay, no. Um, but I think it was for a, a few a few people. The the, the and I got to do this in order, not just um, talk to be talking. But I I think. I think Trev wanted some assurances. Okay. Um, and I think they were willing to bring that to the table because I, I still don't, I still don't think Trev wants wanted to leave. 
Do I think you, I think he feels like he has to. Sure, and that's kind of I. Th- there's a couple different scenarios where this could have played out, and and I do want to get to those. So you're saying a few different people. When I say leadership, I mean board of regents, interim president. No, nope. okay, uh, that that's part of the problem. Okay, because I that's th- why I wanted to clarify. This is kind of speculation, sure, but I'm not. There were several board of regents that weren't even in the loop. Mm-hmm. Now I do think there were one or two that were. Okay that knew is maybe early as the middle of last week Mm -hmm. that something was on the horizon. I do think Chris knew. Okay. Kaborik. Um, that, that this, yeah, that this was a, that this was a thing potentially early last week. Okay. Now what was disclosed? I have no idea. Sure. Um, but I I was surprised it got to Saturday, Mm. but it, but all day, like during those six hours, or however long, I felt better by the hour. Mm-hmm. And then by about three, things started to come out where people all of a sudden felt pretty good about him staying. Um, you know, and not just, you know, not just you and me who had, had talked sort of privately, but all a lot of people around mm-hmm. that same time frame had started. And I think people that operate in the know. Yeah, I, I think people that are, are reasonably well. I mean, I'm not asking the guy down at, no, or, or gal at, you know, quick trip or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No disrespect to quick trip, but I, I, I they may think. be more plugged in than I realized. Yeah. Who knows, right? But yeah, the people that I would consider to be knowledgeable about these situations, people that have been knowledgeable about these situations for me in the past, and and I think people in the athletic department felt the same way. There was a window where I think, all right, it's from about three to five. Yeah, is when people thought he was staying. I'd say I would say about two to four. Okay. So it got to me about three to five. So it was a little earlier and when it yeah, actually was happening. Because I think which is fair. Because I think the email came around it was just before five, four, I think. Four forty, maybe. Yeah. So so about two to four internally, about three to five Because I know I was on my way to parent teacher conferences. Yes. So I was heading to the middle school first, and it was a couple of expletives. Couldn't get it done. He's leaving. Mm. And then he mu- then the department must have got the email. Yeah. Because then it just was widespread. It was just it was just chaos. So that's the timeline yesterday. The 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 period in, in real question here, I think there's two periods in question. A, how did we get to the point where he felt it was necessary to go to college station? Mm-hmm. Right? That's question number one. Question number two is what happened in the six hours between initial report. I really will call it the eight hours between initial report and him leaving. Cause a lot happened in that time period. I think that we don't totally have the answers to yet. Um, as you said, you think Trev was asking for some assurances. Yeah. I think he talked to some very, very influential folks. Okay. Um, that, that, that weren't part of the, the board of regions. I feel pretty good about that. So I, have heard a name that I was told he was meeting with that is not part of the Board of Regents that's very influential. And so I, I think there's a, there's a, there's a couple of two or three th- If you, It just depends on whose perspective. Everybody wants to know the why. I'm not sure we'll ever really get it. I don't know that we will either. But I did. I was encouraged because I felt what Trev was trying to do was um, leverage I felt like he was trying to put Nebraska, the athletic department, and the academics in a better position so they could do their job, mm-hmm. right? I, I think I think he wanted people to do what he was trying to do, mm-hmm. cast a vision, kind of model the behavior, execute the plan, mm-hmm. right? Because that's, I mean, that's really who he is. Mm-hmm. You know, so when he sat down and he had the interview and he talked about I, you know, I, 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 you know, we, we, we need a, we need to find a president. I, I, I think we ought to do that. Like his delivery there. I, I, I think we ought to, yeah, I think we ought to go ahead and do that. Let you know that he's frustrated. Sure. Right. And I think some guys short side option and some other guys that um, I follow on social media, were bringing it back to that segment and now everybody is right. Mm-hmm. But I, but I, I still, I think it was a little more than that as well. You know, because we don't really know more than just wanting to hire a president. 
yeah. wanting to get a present. Yeah. Like, I, I believe that. That you, you think it was significantly more than just that. Yeah, I think that was just part of it. Yeah, sure. Right? Because I know, because a lot of people, I, I'm not mad at the timeline. Yeah, I actually don't think that not having a president yeah. is that big of a deal. So, so I'm not. I'm, These, not, I'm those, not. I'm not stuck on that. Those, I, think, I think it was a factor. Those searches often take a pretty long time. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I think, think was, I think of big universities. I, I mean, seven months isn't isn't ludicrous. I think it was seven months between when Pre President Carter took over the job. Yeah. I think it was about that same time frame. It's, it's happened. Before. We've seen other places take out. You know, I was people in my Twitter mentioned some were pretty informational. We've seen other places take nine months. Yeah. You know, like it's not a super unusual time frame. Yeah, and I and I and I and I would agree with that. I have no idea what you guys, but I I would yeah. agree with that. Just um, just being a Berean. I think I think Ohio State was the other example. Was that where Ted Carter went? I think that place was open, if I'm remembering right. So it's not a super unusual. But you're saying it. You think the president job not being filled was kind of a microcosm of organizational dysfunction that he felt. Yeah, is that a fair way to put I, it? I I would say that. I let's say it's a third. You know, okay. maybe forty percent. Yeah, um, because I I think when you start to take a lot of things that have happened and you deduce it to one thing, you try to pinpoint its focal point. So it's like, you're okay, trying to find the core of the issue. You're right? like, okay, I keep having X amount of issues. This happened, then mm -hmm. this happened, then this happened. And we told me this, and I just would like this, mm -hmm. right? Because he inherited a project that he didn't start. Mm -hmm. Um, had to kind of see that through, um, he cleaned up a lot. He cleaned up a lot of messes early. Mm -hmm. So I just get the sense sometimes like it's not necessarily paying it forward, but you want people, you want to make sure that people have your back. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, it manifests itself in a ton of ways. You know, sometimes it's, Hey, you got to match my energy. You know, I, I want you to, to, to match my, my transparency. I want you to, because sometimes when you work for and with people, that's really all you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want them to match your level of investment, commitment. your level of commitment, your level of... And those are typically the people we like to work for, right? Yes. Like, that won't ask you to do anything that they're that not... That they are willing. not willing to do. 100%. Yeah. So I, I think that's stuck in his craw for a while. Sure. Um, I also think, and tell me if I'm way off base here, right? Because I do think... I may not know. We have, and that's fair. I do think we have to address the the board of regents elephant in the room at some point. Yeah, I mean that's down the road a little bit, but I will I'll say this and I'll say it early. Okay. Does the does the efficiency and the political side of the board of regents need to get better? One hundred percent, because they're trending in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Is that the the sole catalyst for what I think is going on here? I'm not so sure. Okay. I, I'm not so sure. Now, that's not to say, you know, Trev may have looked at it and said, well, this isn't going to get any better. Right. Even though there may not be as direct correlation. Because I do, I do think, I do think a member or two of the Board of Regents was aware mm -hmm. without without really informing the rest of the board of regents are having that discussion. So I think that's kind of, that's a problem. Yeah. You, they probably need to have that discussion. Now, now is that a, is that part of the dysfunction that I think he's dejected about? Sure. Mm -hmm. Is it directly related to all these other issues? Mm. Here's, here's why I, bring because what I say, and I mean this, sure. Right. Like there's this. So the friend in me says, I don't know how long I could continue to, if I didn't like the direction that something was moving in mm -hmm. or leadership, or I didn't have a ton of faith mm -hmm. in leadership. Okay. I understand. I don't know how much you would endure. I, I would, I would ask you to endure my friend. Yeah. But where I struggled yesterday was sometimes I think I, I just want people to put their hands up and fight. Like, so this is the duality of of my of my competitiveness and kind of how I feel about people. Mm -hmm. Don't take it like rise above. Stand up and fight it. If you if you if you really love this institution mm -hmm. and it means as much to you as you say, I'm not sure I 
I want to play the blame game with the Board of Regents. Just fight. So here's. Do, does that make sense? Hundred percent. But 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 if you were like going to give, if you were going to ask me advice, as a friend. Yeah, I would say, man, I don't know, Ravi. That's you know, a bad work it's environment. A ba- it's a bad work environment. Yeah. Maybe you got to find something to do. Because what I think this is going to do, like if you're looking for a glass half full, is I really think you're going to have to revisit the 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 political protocol and the infrastructure and how it operates. So like it's going to take. It's going to. It has to. You have to take a good hard look that's at it. Kind. That's kind of what I wanted to get at a little bit here because. I honestly don't care what your political leanings are. That's not what this is about. What this is about is politics having crept into a place where it probably does not belong. Because I, I was reading articles last night from like the Nebraska Examiner about they will do a good job. So flat, you know, the fr- Flatwater Press and yeah, free, the Examiner, the Flatwater they, Free Press. I don't know if they can get people to like talk, but they'll probe. So they'll probe. I'm, I'm reading this article about a board of regents seat uh, la- in the last in 2022 mm-hmm. that became highly politicized, mm-hmm. where the outgoing governor was supporting one person, the incoming governor was supporting another person, and it was strictly because of their political leanings. And that's you're talking about in reference to the article. Yes, they. This is what was was referenced in the article during it was the it was the race between Williams and Wilmot. Um, and so Will Williams was from like Gothenburg, Wilmot's from Beaver city, I think. Um, and this was basically what happened in this race. And one of the things that Wilmot was running on allegedly, this was attributed to her and she tried to kind of back off of it a little bit was the fact that they thought they needed to get rid of Ronnie green and Ted Carter. That was the. That was the motivation attributed to her stance. Mm-hmm. Okay. And didn't really come out and deny it. it. Was like, well, I think we should evaluate whatever. And 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 listen, can I let me just say this real sure. quick? I don't let's not I, I get the I get the optics, but remember, optics are the word we use when we don't have enough information. Sure. I get the optics of Carter, Green, and Alberts all leaving, and we talk about good people. Mm-hmm. I'm not so sure all three of those people are uniquely connected from a positive aspect, right? I don't know the relationship Mm -hmm. between Ted Carter, Ronnie Green, and Trev Alberts. I only know the relationship between Mm -hmm. Trev Alberts and Ted Carter. Mm -hmm. So I know Ronnie Green gets lumped in there, but I'm not one of those people that's saying these three things are connected totally so so i i I, I, that's my stance on that triumvirate totally fair i'm only putting him in there because i understand i i I wanted to say that for me sure sure um i'm including him because he was in the article in terms of some of the board of regents wanting to pursue new leadership as as part of their agenda the problem that i have with that situation is the the terms liberal and conservative were attributed to education. Mm -hmm. And once you start talking about education in those terms, you've already lost. Yeah. That's the problem. And, and, and and the pan and the problem is, is people panic because of the tuition numbers, like Mm -hmm. the debt, the, the, the student enrollment, like what's gone on since COVID, like everybody's anxiety Mm -hmm is ramped up and it and and it typically rolls downhill Mm -hmm. so i I think people's and i i think people's sensitivity was is is heightened like what we're willing to talk about what we're willing to put up with it 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 is it is it's heightened and so for 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 trev yesterday the one thing i feel pretty comfortable about Mm -hmm. is i don't feel like i know this isn't a money thing Mm-hmm. And I think he's well aware of the volatility of their athletic director uh, position mm-hmm. and that it's not board of regents there. It's boosters. Yep. Fair. I think he's, I think he's well aware of that, mm-hmm. but what does he typically gravitate towards vision and leadership? The exact two words I was going to, I was going to use. And, and, and when, I, when you read his announcement, that's what he's hanging his hat on. Now, will it be short lived? I listen. I don't know, mm-hmm. but I do feel he's in such a place 
emotionally that that's what he'll I was going to say ran to, but I'm not trying to give the impression that he's that that's what he's that's what he's drawn towards. I, I, because I, I again the one thing I think I feel good about mm -hmm. is I thought I thought yesterday's meetings prop for the most part mm -hmm. were about putting Nebraska in a better position across the board moving forward. I don't think it was to elevate I I don't I don't know it yes was it a power play sure was was it a game of of chicken, not so much. I it think was, there were some things that he wanted. He was trying to leverage a situation to try and accomplish the vision that he had. Yes, is that fair? That's I. That's I would. Yeah. So and obviously there was enough friction there that he felt like he couldn't get that done. Yeah. See, I wish I knew what happened, kind of down the stretch. Yeah. In the last couple hours there, yeah. that I like know. two to four period. And I and I'm really and, and you know it may take some time, but yeah. Um. And, and again, there are some there are some media outlets out there that that can get people to. They're really good at what they do, getting people to talk. You know, yeah. Um, so, here's what I do know: is people are going to be paying, whether it's these people's fault or not. People are going to be paying a lot more to the board of regents uh, election in eight months. Yeah, than and they and, did last. And time. we got to take some ownership, man. Yeah. It's like that's why I'm not. You gosh, you know me, man. It, it's like the people that talk about bad kids. Mm -hmm. Well, it starts with parenting too, right? Yeah. Like it, you can be upset about the board of regents, but who does the electing? I was gonna say it's an elected position, like like we do. It's so, an elected position. So, and how many of you actually know who you're voting for? So I'm not. If you vote for board of regents, my that's not where my my angst. I and, do think it is a problem. I, and listen, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to fight you over that. Uh, we've got more. We got we got, yeah. I do want to get to Trev's statement. I'll set up the lineup at some point. We do have guests. I don't know. We'll talk. Uh, we've got more Herd at Sports Radio coming up next. We're back here on Herd at Sports Radio and 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well. I did want to get to our lineup because I don't know when else we're going to get to it. So we're we're going to go now. Uh, coming up here at eight o'clock, we're going to talk to Mitch Sherman from the Athletic. Um, he put out a piece on The Athletic uh, either last night or this morning, I'm not sure when it dropped, uh, kind of examining the why of the Trev Albert situation. So glad we'll get to talk to Mitch this, this morning, 8.45. Take a little break from all the doom and gloom and talk to our guy Brian Edwards, our Vegas insider, see if we can get, uh, you know, may, maybe win a few bets this weekend and cheer ourselves up a little bit. 9 a.m., we've got Michael Bruns from Husker 24-7. And then at 9.45, we've got head Nebraska women's basketball coach Amy Williams to wrap up the show as well. Between now and then, we're going to have a lot of, uh, lot of Trev Albert talk, frankly. I mean, that's that's the case. Um, I will say, if, if you need a break from the Trev Albert talk, just give me a timeout, and I've got a whole list of... Me? Yes. No, I'm cool. Just give me If you're just like, hey, I just need a break, give me a timeout. I've got a whole list of uh, internet theories on why Kate Middleton is missing. So if you if you just need a break, we can just switch gears real quick and then come right back to it, okay? Who's Kate Middleton? <laughs> she's the she's the heir to so Prince William is her husband. He's the heir to the King of England. So she's the Princess of Wales. And she hasn't been seen in public in like four months. Wait, is that the one that they got mad that he was marrying? No, that's Meghan Markle. That's the other one. That's uh, Prince Harry. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just saying. She hasn't been seen publicly in four months, and people are Yeah, that's, that's that's not my jam. I know. That's just a little break. A little, I, little just, pilot cleanser. I, I'm just kind of... And listen, I, I want to tell... Like, I want to <laughs> empower you. I, you have the... You don't need my blessing, but however you want to feel, like, feel mm -hmm. that way, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you want to be mad, like, I get it. I, 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 was I, on, want, I was on pins and needles yesterday. Was I... was. But at no point was I angry, right? I, I was a little scared. Mm -hmm. There's a um, lot of disappointed by the a, end. A lot of disappointment. Well, I was disappointed across the board because it didn't. I don't think it had to get to yesterday, mm -hmm. right? I I wish, like, if in hindsight, it's 2020, I wish I could have reversed some of the events mm -hmm. that got us to this point. Yeah, I I, I wish, like, upon a, upon the first knowing that this was a thing. 
like last week. We had yesterday's meeting last week. Yeah. And then maybe he doesn't visit college you've station. Got time. You've got time. Yeah. Because yesterday you're under the gun, right? Well, by yeah. The, by the time the report comes out and you're scrambling, you have a finite amount of time. And and I and I don't agree with like that's why I think I I, I just want to spark people to be individual free thinkers. Like take collections of information, do with it what you will, be empowered to think um freely right i don't subscribe to the well how could he walk it back like once it was out like how could he walk it back because believe me i think that was discussed mm -hmm. and i just simply asked the question mm -hmm. would you rather explain while you why you are staying or why, you're leaving? Or why you are leaving what is your explanation why you're staying so like don't that's, don't that doesn't make any sense to me that's not a good reason and guess what he could like that wasn't a thing. Yeah, that's a thing we make up. So we have a talk like it wouldn't have been an issue here. Now, were there people disappointed yesterday at 930? That, that was even, even a thing? an option. Oh, 100 sure. percent. But you know who forgives those people? Yeah. Like, the, 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 was it? Yeah. Was he going to have some explaining to do? Sure. Sure. But I think like it's an easier explanation because I think he just had to tell the truth. Yeah. And I still think. The easiest ex explanation is to tell the truth, but that's not, you're still not going to get, and, and I don't know that he cares, but you're still, there's certain a number of people that even if you give a truthful explanation now are not forgiving him. Yeah. Whereas before, if he, if you're explaining why you stayed a truthful explanation, you're good to go. Right. Like 99.9% .9 of people. Right. I, I mean, like, like, do you need a national search firm when you have, an available sitting president. What do you mean? Like, do do you need a national search firm to find your mm -hmm. university president when you have someone or some bodies right in your very own backyard? Like, let's say at UNMC, mm -hmm. where you could you could you could find a president that you think would. So it's little things like that. Well, right? like yeah. that's easy to explain if that's part of the deal. But yeah. I, I listen, I'm not. You know, I'm a. I always like to listen to other people's mm -hmm. opinions so I can see. And I'm not mad. Like you, you kind of see what's going on in our in our stream mm -hmm. yard, and people have lots of ideas. Warren has a, Warren has something that has been a major talking point, mm -hmm. right? It's it's he wants another bullet point on his resume to pursue a commissioner or even higher job. He has already looked at some of them, like head of college football playoffs. Mm. Okay. I, I've heard I heard that a lot yes, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, not discounting it. I'll, I'll tell you guys the same thing I told I told Warren in Streamyard. You're going to a situation in A and M which has its own unique challenges. Mm -hmm. Okay, for for not, athletic, an, not an easy job. Four athletic directors in how many years? 11? 10, 11. Something. Okay, and it took Trev a, about three months worth of recon to step into that very same kind of. Um, turbulence mm -hmm. at nebraska mm -hmm. but it was his home institution so you're willing it to made, take it on made it a little bit more yeah. so i so i just so let's say that's true let's say that supposition is true ah he just wants to wants to add to the resume he wants to cuddle up closer to sankey right because i heard this a lot mm -hmm. yesterday it's it's a it's a it's a power play man he wants to wants a bigger job bigger job what would what do you at what cost yeah like, like at at what cost mm -hmm. would you would you be willing to invite headaches? This level of headache too. At, this is at, not small. At a very at a at a large large level for the sake of advancement at fifty four years of age at a place that he considers to be home. Like right, like that's a factor, right? If he's at if he's at if he's the AD at Clemson right now, right, and has said all the same things, same person, right? Because he, he's got a house in Clemson. That's the only reason I even brought that up. That's why it was in my head. South Carolina. It's whatever. Yeah. So somewhere in that neighborhood. Right. So um, the let's say he's the exact same person, exact same career. Everything's the same, except instead of taking over at University of Nebraska, he takes over at Clem or South Carolina, Clemson, wherever. Right. And the exact same thing plays out. They're struggling. Let's say they fall off from Dabo. He has to hire a new head coach, whatever. Make the situations as similar as possible. And then he decides. Yeah, I think I'd rather be in the SEC than the than the ACC. I'd rather I think I'd rather cozy up to to Greg Sankey. Rather if you're than, gonna struggle, wouldn't you struggle closer to home for advancement? 
Yes, that's my point, right? Okay. If it's Clemson, South Carolina, it makes sense if he goes somewhere else for advancement because, okay, yeah, Clemson might be mad at him, but who cares? I, I just don't know. Like, and I'm not saying I, I'm I'm not saying there's not some validity in in what Warren is saying. What I'm saying is, how much would you put up with, and for how long? Because an extra two million, it is is for Trev, in my opinion, is not worth. So the potential headache. So what, what, what was the separator? So here's what, where I think, was it the vision. So here's where I think the ambition and future jobs could have played into the situation, right? Is if there already is issues and like you've had in the back of your mind, you know, say maybe before you took, he the, doesn't even, they just hired a coach, right? But I'm saying like, before you took the Nebraska job, let's say he's at Omaha, whatever, or at some point in his life, he's kind of put out, ah, oh, maybe I'd like to be a commissioner of a conference, or maybe I'd like to be, uh, you know, at the, there wasn't even a college football playoff commissioner at that time or whatever. But he's like, maybe I'd like to kind of run the, the championship. Maybe, like, maybe at some point in his life, he's put these things. Yeah, I don't think he wants to be an AD forever. Right. So maybe at some point, those have been career goals. And he gets to Nebraska, and he kind of kind of sh shuts those career goals off the side a little bit because he's like, hey, this is a place I care about. I could see myself staying here. But then you start having issues with your the guy that you – really enjoy working for Ted Carter, all of a sudden he's gone. You start having issues with vision of maybe interim president, maybe influential people outside of this university system, building projects, whatever building projects that are going to cost half a billion dollars that, um, the, the board of regents that maybe doesn't, didn't love your predecessor and you kind of feel some way about it. Like if those things start to happen and you previously had already been like, yeah, maybe I don't want to be an AD forever. Those things start to come back into your mind. Yeah, in in their in their totality. Yes, right. Yeah. But it they get brought back up because of the lack of mm -hmm. vision, the lack of leadership, all of that. Uh, Jess, Jess, Jesse, here, stay on the line. We will get to you after the break. Um, I, I think one thing we can all agree on too, yeah. actually. Yeah. Ridiculous PR blunder. Horrible. And the absolute worst timing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I that, that's where anger creeps in for sure. And I want to dig deeper because I feel like anger is a secondary emotion. Like what about this made us angry? Do we feel betrayed? Cause I've, I kind of feel like a lot of it feels like we feel betrayed. We'll get to that and more coming up next on her sports radio. Wrapping up our number one here on her at sports radio and 590 ESPN, Omaha, ESPN, tri cities. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Yeah. I, I, didn't mean to drop that bomb on, on Jacob there. It just kind of got to the point where I was like, I, I don't know that we can go another minute without I, acknowledging I, I this. I knew and you started reading. I was like, oh, you mean Trev? Yeah. I was, I was surprised it got that far. Yeah. Um, we are wrapping up our number one here. We've got Brett on the hotline here. Brett, what's going on? Hey, good morning, fellas. Hey, Damon. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, reaching out on Saturday to come see the little guy when we were at state basketball. I guess maybe when we move to Omaha, we'll just go to Bell West and beat you by 50 for four years. Right. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> t t timing, Brett timing next. No, I'm Get, giving you back time. There you go. Um, so I'm looking at this situation and, and what you had said, Damon, about communication, trust, Ravi, you've kind of been like, Hey, there's blame on both sides. And to me, I look at it a little bit differently. I look at it just in the society we live in. You brought up trust, communication, pushing your own views. But to me, the biggest problem that's been at the university is the fact that here's what I believe in and I'm going to stand my ground and bring you alongside and meet in the middle. Hey, I'm willing to give this up to gain this let's compromise and work instead of saying nope this is who i'm dying on it and i'm gone and i feel like that's the bigger issue that's happened with the university for the last 15 20 years versus wanting to point blame at people yeah what are your guys yeah thoughts? yeah i i could i mean i i get there's some concessions but i think the thing that we got to understand is like there's power i appreciate the call brett I told you about doing that um, I, I, I like the, the thing about power struggles, they happen all the time at universities, mm -hmm. right? This is not uncommon. No. Right. Nor is the time spirit, nor is the time 
period spent mm-hmm. finding a president. Yeah, not un- not unusual. Right. So like those are the things where I'm like, just fight, fight. Like it, it's 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 going to be OK. Fight. So here's be- because the part the hard the hard part that I have a hard time reconciling. And and, and this is. I, it's slippery ground because you never want to be in people's pocketbooks everybody always wants more money i guess Mm -hmm. Uh, so i hate i feel bad saying well he doesn't need the money because like really who knows right Right. i don't don't know um but but i would say like if you're gonna if you're gonna go chase money Mm -hmm. i'm simply asking people to like at at what cost i don't know if that's what he um also do we really believe nebraska wouldn't have matched the money do we really believe that? Yeah, I don't. So the, I think there's some, I think there's a, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, he's, he's made a, he, he was set to make a ton more money just in a couple years, seven months ago. Well, when did he redo the contract? So November, he, three he, months ago, he redid, four months, seven months ago. He did the, the contract in November and it that was going to escalate 800 to 1.7. Yeah. And then in 2026, it went from it's supposed to go to 1.7 to 2.6. Yeah, right. So that's why I said a couple of years because he already doubled it, and then it was going to go up another 50 percent ish. And A and M puts him in the top 10, right? He was in the top 10. A and M puts him in the top three. Okay, he was in the top 10 at Nebraska, though. He was very well compensated for an athletic director already. So the at the 1.7, the 800 was low. That's I on I, the lower end. I shrug a little bit at the money as much as I would entertain the power like i would entertain the power discussion before the money I, the money Which because makes i sense. because i think he would want stability and power you know because part of and part of the leadership strategies that he i that i think he talked about with that department and tried to cast is is to see it through mm-hmm. right is is cast a vision now here's the plan of execution so did he feel so defeated he had to bounce? I like I don't know. So here's and 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 the thing about it is I don't like this is he's not going to be a martyr and we can't be an apologist. Mm-hmm. It it was it was is it's disappointing. Yeah, it, it is. It, it it's it's extremely disappointing. But what I don't want people to, and I it's human nature, so I, it's out of my control. But we probably only know about forty percent, if that. Yeah, that's, of, I mean, of yeah. what of of what it was, because I remember I started really saying I think the president thing was only a little bit of it. Yeah, so I I kind of landed on three sort of tent poles of where I think this kind of happened for Trev, right? And I, I don't think one of them is true, but I, I have to put it out there because I think it's plausible. So there's, these are kind of the three plausible scenarios that I think led Trev to this point. What, and this has nothing to do with Trev, just from how things played out. Number one is maybe he, like, the first option, which I don't think is true, is the option that maybe he's the guy that UNO wrestling and football fans tried to tell us he was and just was, you know, deceiving, a snake. What, these are terms that I've heard used. Yeah. Um, 100%. and was just only in it for himself. He's a climber, an, a super ambitious guy, and was always just using his current job as a stepping stone to the next job. That's option number one. I don't particularly subscribe to that one, but I think it's plausible based on the what how things have played out. Number two, what you said yesterday when this all broke. The power structure at Nebraska, whether that's regents, president, influential boosters, whatever the case is, people that have influence over the athletic department has become so broken that he doesn't feel like he can function anymore. And he is leaving almost as a last gasp to say, the best thing I can do for this place is to leave and give it a wake-up call. That's option number two. Option number three is what you've talked about this morning, that the power structure was frustrating enough for him that he gave up and didn't want to fight it. Those, to me, I think are the only plausible options. Yeah. And I lean towards the second two, one of the second two. I don't think it's the first one, just based on your relationship with him. Yeah. So when I when I go back to, so there's there's lots of variables. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the fiscal report from UNO, mm-hmm. right? How what it, whatever happened within the athletics at that department? Yeah, the finances there, right, were kind of a mess. Okay, I'm sure that's 
internally, however that made him feel, that's that's a thing, right? Mm-hmm. You, you have the lawsuit, right? You're, you're going to get named, but let's say you settle mm-hmm. and you don't want to settle. After in the statement, you, you like came out and said, you, you didn't just say we don't comment on these matters. Mm-hmm. You, you said that you d- deny, <laughs> you, you, you don't agree with the allegations. Like you said, like, which I thought was a little abnormal. And Mm -hmm. then you have the funding. Then you have the lack of a president. Mm -hmm. So those are all, those are all real. Those are all things that have happened in the past calendar year, real tangible things that we know about. If those things are starting to mount and stack, how closely connected would you have to be with your employers or your bosses to help see you through difficult times? I would have to have an enormous level of trust in them. Yeah. So I think all those things matter. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're having meetings, like let's say yesterday, the day before, you're looking for some assurances in those particular areas. And here's the problem with assurances. I I, I don't just think it was about money. I don't either. I I don't either. Because I genuinely believe if it was like, hey, A&M's offering. And not that it makes it any better. Because the one thing I was mad about Mm -hmm. was the timing. I, I Like, sure. Because I love the university for me is bigger than any one person, mm-hmm. right? I never even said the universe. I used to get mad when people used to give too many attributes to Coach Osborne. Mm-hmm. I said we don't call it the University of of Coach Osborne. We it's the University of Nebraska. Even he would tell you that, mm-hmm. right? Now they'll, they'll, there are always those people that would come back and say, "Well, that's not what, what he really." But I, I don't know that man. You know him on a different level, and and if you think he's this and you think he's that, I don't know. I'm just telling you what he's instilled in us, right? Mm-hmm. Bigger, bigger than bigger than him, bigger than it, it's the institution, it's the state, mm-hmm. whatever. So do I, if I can try to convince myself Nebraska is going to be fine? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do they have to fix some things in place? Sure. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. This isn't in defense of Trev because we'll, we're going to be bigger than Trev. And if, but I'm not, I'm not going to make him a martyr either. No. Right. Cause the, 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 the way that it was handled yesterday is poor it's poor very poor now some of that was out of his control but a lot of it was in his control Mm -hmm. so that part when you set a series of events in motion a lot of times you lose control over how people find out the order was backwards yeah but a lot of times like if you're if you're going to make that trip to college station if you're going to entertain and i do know and i and i do know he was asked not to go Right. But I'm saying if, if you're going to do but those, that happens in business, right? Hey, don't 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 do it. If you're going to do those things, you have to be aware that you may lose control of how the inf- information gets out. If you don't do it up front, you have to understand I may not be the one that gets to tell the story the way I want to. Right. So that's on him. And, and that's on got, him, and, too. And you've got to be OK with that. Like what would have been so bad or such a venture mm-hmm. to go conquer that you're willing to burn it all down here? literally really i mean that i don't think that's being dramatic literally um here's the problem with assurances though if you don't trust the person giving you the assurances they mean nothing yeah and i think that's part of the pro- place we landed yesterday i'm gonna get i'm gonna talk to mitch about the the coach rule angle too because we haven't got to that yet. coming up next we've got mitch sherman from the athletic here on her at sports radio kicking off hour number two here on her at sports radio am 590 espn omaha espn tri cities we're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're joined now by Mitch Sherman from The Athletic. Mitch, how are you this morning? Morning, guys. I'm all Mitch, right. Mitch, how, how, how are we doing? How are things? Um, a little, little tired, how, how, maybe. How, how, but... Yeah. So that piece <laughs> came up last night fairly late. Um, I think it was on, online about 5 o'clock last five, night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Worked on it for most of the day, so you know, oh, head start. T- trying to figure out at what point were you going to feel comfortable hitting send, right? Did did it change from like ten thirty to four, or were you pretty consistent like the whole way through? Because I know some of your colleagues felt pretty good. Yeah, um, from the morning reports and then the confirmations of the reports, I felt pretty confident that <clears throat> Trev was going to leave, um, that that was, that was happening yesterday. Um, I would say 
mid afternoon when there hadn't been any news, I, you know, doubled back, tried to check with some people who might be in the know because in the morning, the people around Nebraska weren't really in the know. And, and, you know, unless they were just playing coy, um, it was, it was all very much a surprise. Now, I mean, there've been various rumors about Trev through the off season and, and, you know, jobs that he might've expressed some interest in, but I, you know, I really didn't think that I just didn't think this day would come. I certainly not this year. Um, and certainly not, uh, for him to, to take, um, uh, what, what's basically a lateral move. Um, if if Trev Alberts had left Nebraska at some point and become a conference commissioner, okay, yeah. sure. But not this. Um, not I, it's, it's hard to even sift through just like the surface level dynamics at Texas A&M and find reasons why it's a better situation than Nebraska. I mean, you can talk about money, but money's not really an issue at Nebraska. I mean, you, whether you have – uh, you know, a billion versus two billion. Like, what's what's the difference, um, honestly? So, I was caught off guard, surprised. Um, Mitch, I, it really, I, it really I, didn't change through the day. Gosh, I'm one thousand percent with you, right? And I don't know if it's important for me to get other people to believe that, but you said lateral. That's a little stronger than what I would have said, but I did say. How bad or how much could you have not – let's say he didn't get his way. Let's say if you're anti-Trev, he didn't get his way. If, you, if you're pro-Trev and you want to blame somebody, it's how much did he not get his way. Where you would, where you would go to College Station for what, in essence, like what would you put up with to make that move? Like how bad could it have been, right? Like what would you be willing to, to put up with to have a similar situation for a, a, a little more money mm -hmm. and a place that you're less familiar with, wouldn't you rather know your problems? Uh, yeah, I, I do. That's a good point. I do think so. And and not just less familiar, but it's more uncomfortable for him to walk on, walk in. He's not going to be immediately accepted in the same way that he was at Nebraska. He doesn't have the kind of equity built up at a and He's got a football coach um, who's yet to coach a game. Um, that's and the, he's you know, an NM guy. Yeah, right. Um, it's it's pretty baffling, and obviously, it speaks to and it hints at a lot of under the surface issues that exist at Nebraska. Um, you know, we know what some of that stuff is. It's you know, and I I, I detailed a, a, a bit of it in in my piece last night. Um, I, and I really just think it comes back to leadership and his confidence in the leadership. Um, you, you know, in the board of regents um, and in the people that they uh, that they hire. And it's it's unstable for sure right now. I mean, you've got an interim president about to appoint an interim athletic director. And I wonder, uh, I saw uh, President Kaborik's statement last night about starting a national search for the next athletic director. Is is that is that right? Is is he really the person to run the search for the next AD if he's not the permanent president? If he's the permanent president, sure. But can you have an interim president run a search for a, a permanent athletic director? You can, but it's awfully dysfunctional. And, you know, to veer really quick off, off course, because I want to say this, is, is that the thing that's just really difficult, I think, to swallow right now is that we should be talking about what's going on with Nebraska basketball oh, and the excitement person. around spring football. I mean, look at what the basketball team has on its plate tomorrow and next yeah, week. We'll, we'll talk to Amy in, a, in, a, in about an hour. Yeah, and, and, and nobody is thinking about that right now. It's this huge shadow over everything is all about this. You think the it's total coincidence that the baseball team was down nine, nothing after two innings last night at Wichita state. It, it might be, it might be a coincidence or it might be that these student athletes understand and feel the impact of what's happening around them. And you hate to think how that could, how that could affect um, some really important times on the, on the courts and playing fields coming up here over the next days and months and weeks. Yeah, I, I I stuck my neck out on the line yesterday at nine thirty, only to get it whacked 
because I felt like those things, Mitch, would be very, very important to Trev, right? Just the mm -hmm. timing, mm -hmm. the, what the 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 symbolism of what leaving now, how it would how it would hurt undermine, yeah. everything that he's kind of promoted in that athletic department, and so I struggled with. Personally, as a friend, do you let him off the hook because he was that miserable? Or is it like, you know what? I wanted my son and my family. Like, I wanted people to be able to spend more time on, around you under your direction. Like, student athletes need you, and now I'm mad, right? But at no point yesterday was, was I upset. Can you understand the spectrum of feelings that people would have without having to explain it or rationalize it to you? I think, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of people who are upset and who look at it and say, I, you know, I can hear his reasons. I can try to understand them. Um, I think that they're, they're, they're logical, but also this isn't Bill Moose. This isn't somebody who came in from a different place and felt the need to leave because leadership was in disarray or, you know, there were budgetary issues or there were fundraising issues or there was a lack of coordination on this topic. Now, this is what Nebraska, this is where Nebraska was supposed to have an advantage because the guy in charge was one of what was one was what he was one of us. He was, you know, if, if you're looking at this from Nebraska's perspective and, and I, I don't it's, it's going to take a long time. It may never happen. I think for some people in this community around the state to get over what is a very stark sense of betrayal this mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's, there's, I think an entire community in, in the state that has watched Trev Alberts from the early nineties and feels like they've been alongside him a little bit, like they've, you know, been pushing and pulling with him to go through his post playing career in broadcasting to getting started in administration, to moving up that ladder, you know, to overcoming challenges and getting to this place where it's really starting to look at Nebraska, like you've got momentum with football and basketball and other sports and, for him to take this turn at that point, it's 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 something that I think people will 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 always it's it's never forget. So, um, you know, whether that's re entirely real or just perceived, I mean, Trev mm -hmm. is the one who pulled himself up and, and advanced his his career on his own. But I do think there's a lot of people who feel attached to it, and that's why the emotions are are what they are today. Especially for a guy that did so much homework on his own before taking the job at Nebraska. I mean, sure. he did his own recon. It was kind of unbelievable. And he took some time to do it. And really it was a lifetime of homework. It was three, it was decades of homework. You know, I understand that he had to sit down and do things to, to research what was going on in the current climate, but he lived it, you know, even while he was at, at Omaha, you know, he was never too far away from Lincoln. Uh, we're talking with Mitch Sherman from the athletic Mitch. I want to ask about the, the coach rule portion of this all because I think that's a big reason why there's been part of the reason there's been such a house of cards reference right emotional um emotional response to this is because I think with the two guys that rule specifically called out as the reason he's here outside of his wife telling him that he needs to come to Nebraska Ted Carter and Trev Alberts he very specifically said are the reason he's at Nebraska I think there's a lot of fear amongst Nebraska fans that without those two guys, Matt Rule now becomes in play. Like, how, what, how does the football coach play into all of this with the departure of Trev? Well, we'll see. It's a huge, you know, I think it's a huge um, reason for it's, it's something to watch. Um, I, I do think that Matt Rule in his time at Nebraska, Look, if this if 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 you told Matt Rule what he now knows in October, November of 2022, that 
Alberts and Carter were going to be gone by in March of 24. Well, then he never would have taken the job, mm -hmm. but that's undeniable. But um, what he has learned about Nebraska and how he has uh, poured himself into the state over the last almost a year and a half now is, is good for, for Nebraska, good for his, his future prospects, for the ability to, uh, of, of this university to keep him, but it's not, it's not a, it's not a great situation. Um, we'll see it, a lot's, a lot's going to depend on who fills the jobs. Um, who's the president, who's the athletic director, um, what kind of, of, a, of a connection can they forge with Matt rule? And then we'll go from there. But, um, there certainly are, I think things on the table and options that he would have to consider that he didn't plan to have to consider uh, 16 months ago because of what's happened here since since uh, last August. Yeah, I, I think he stated that perfectly, right? Because you, you, on one side of the coin, there is the Carter-Alberts thing, but on the other side, he loves his daughter's school, like sings their praises. You know, Brant's going to go to college at Nebraska. He's moving his parents here. There's lots of things that I think he in, 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 enjoys as a challenge. I just, I just don't think, and I get it. You know, the low hanging fruit is well. What about Penn State and this, that, and the other? And I'm just like, you get. And now after yesterday, I, I'm not sure what to believe when people tell me things. But, um, <laughs> you know, he's not going to go to Penn State. Yeah, I, like he's I'm one. He's, like he's not. He's not going to go there. He, and he said that. Like one. I'm cow Kinder. Air dap again, like we we just. Now, I mean, other like, other things. Now, could, now could things change, and could it be other schools? But the lazy, low hanging mm -hmm. Penn State thing is drives me up the wall. It it literally drives me up the wall. Mitch, I I'm curious with the. I'm I'm curious if you how much you think the lawsuit has has an impact on what we've seen play out over the last couple of days because it's something that has been brought up a ton. Um, I tend to think that that's not a primary reason of this move, but it it does it's a big enough thing that I, I do feel like the question needs to be asked. Do you think that was a factor? Obviously, the the lawsuit follows him, right? It, it's not like it just. Yeah magically goes away because he took a different yeah, job. Yeah, why do people keep saying I that? I don't know, right? But I, I do want to address, do you think that either a lack of support regarding that issue or... Maybe how it's going to be handled. How, Yeah, how it's going to be handled was a factor in, in this move at all? Yeah, I think it's silly to think that it has no impact, but I don't think it's the deciding... I don't, I don't think it pushed him It pushed him to leave. Um, I think it's been on his mind. Um I think he's had to had to have some conversations. Um, I think he probably has some had had we say now in the past tense had some concerns about um, again there not being a president in place and how that situation could potentially be viewed by uh, the next boss of his. But um, as you said, he continues to. He, it, it, it will follow him. And if there's a judgment against him, um, it's going to be a, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to impact him, whether he's at Nebraska or Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. And I do wonder if he's at A&M and this negative publicity comes out because there's a judgment issued against him or there's a settlement and he's, you know, there's no admission of, of it's not a criminal case. There's no admission of guilt, but whatever it's public perception um, if he's ruled to be negligent, um, I, I wonder how do people view that in College Station, and what, could it actually be worse for him there, um, where he doesn't have uh, relationships in, in in the place in the way that he does at Nebraska than if if that situation played out for him in Lincoln, where I, where I think people feel like they, and, and understandably, people do know him. Um, maybe maybe not. Um, I, I don't. I don't but to answer your question, I don't think it's it's not the de decisive factor, but I, I, I think it's on, it, it, it weighs on his mind in all decisions that he makes. Mitch, which were which were you more, um, I guess, taken aback by yesterday? 
the t the timing or how it was handled from a public mm -hmm. re relations standpoint and maybe they're connected but i don't know i think they're connected a little bit um again without without uh, strong leadership it's difficult to structure the way that you portray a move like this publicly um nebraska had to be very reactive in in a in how it how it framed this it had to you know wait all day for trev to make his announcement send out the staff email um and then structure a statement from uh the the interim president um i it, it wasn't it wasn't ideal um does it change your mind at all a lot of people were if, ready. You, if it, does it change your mind or your opinion at all if 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 Kabarik were to like say like when this became a thing does the timeline matter to you in terms of how you view strong versus whatever kind of leadership like if it you know if it was well it happened then or i became aware of this because the statement was very general it said the last day or two we had some very intense conversations and we did everything um we could right so you know, if he were if he were to have known on on Tuesday or Wednesday or, or whomever knew and didn't divulge much, does that change your perception of the situation? I think you'd like your you'd like your your president, you'd like the leader to be as in the know as possible. And I don't think he became in the know until based on his own statement until it was far down the down the road. So um that just reinforces, I think, what we're looking at here with a situation that lacks, um, you know, a driving a driving force. And that is one of the roots of the whole problem that led this to arise in the first place. Mitch, as, as we kind of sit here and, and think about what's happened, I'm also starting to gravitate towards what's next i know it probably makes way more sense as you said to hire a president before you hire an athletic director but have you thought at all about um some potential names that would make sense at nebraska to succeed uh trev alberts yeah i think that's going to depend on how they go about um structuring the timeline of it i think it makes sense yes as i said to pick a president first and then that president is going to have connections that president is going to have preferences and without having any idea who that president might be i mean yeah there have been candidates named for the president's job but nobody has has taken it yet nobody has been offered it and accepted it yet so um it's uh it, we're, we're a couple steps away from being able to even really think about who the ad might be you know you can you can draw the obvious initial connections to nebraska and you know it's like with a like with a coach or to coach uh, rule or whatever yeah, yeah. right to, to nebraska or or to matt rule and you can look in 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 matt rule's background and say well he's worked with this administrator now i don't think mac Rhodes at baylor is going to be a candidate he's paid a lot at baylor and i just don't think that with the as we said the unstable leadership at nebraska that that mac Rhodes would would entertain entertain this even being in the big 10 versus the big 12 but um, there were other people that Matt Rule and some of his staff worked with at Baylor who, um, you know, have advanced on and, and proven themselves in the in the world of college athletics that that, that could be an option. Um, so, yeah, those are those are two routes to go, like a connection to Nebraska, like a Garth Glissman or somebody who, um, you know, Garth, of course, is the you know former NBA exec who's, who's the associate commissioner of the SEC and has deep Nebraska ties and, and wanted the job. Uh, four years ago, when three years ago, when when Trev was hired, so those are the those are the obvious places to look. But until we we find out how how the timeline is going to work, if Kaborik's going to make the hire as an interim president, or if a new president's going to make the hire, it's hard to really get too far down the down the road on knowing the direction that Nebraska will even look to go. Uh, Mitch, you've you've done this a, a long time, going back to the Daily Nebraska and within the state, understanding the landscape. Why do you think the triumvirate, a uh, cohesive triumvirate, has been so elusive for 
this institution when we typically always kind of dumb it down to one thing and that's football, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. and I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm saying that to the, the, the commonality in pulling in the same direction and cause it's so important to me and it's almost, it's like trying to bottle smoke. I just can't quite get it all right. Like the chancellor, the president and athletic director, unified vision, why has it been so elusive? Yeah, when you said triumvirate, I thought you meant like president, chancellor on one line, athletic director on the second line, football <laughs> coach on the third line. <laughs> well, that, that's a, no, that's no I would entertain that. That's that's what I thought you meant too. Hey, listen, I'll take it. That's what I thought you meant. I thought it's it was the same, president. It's chancellor. the same answer either way. It, whether it you're is. talking about whether you're talking about president, chancellor, AD, or yeah, put them on the same line. AD, AD, coach. Um, it's the same answer either way. And you said it that people care so much. People care so much that they overextend. Um, and I'm talking about people in important positions as uh, contributors, like monetary contributors, people in political positions, um, people in leadership positions within the university. They all they all there, there's so many people who are invested that. You just naturally end up with forces that are tugging in opposite directions. And that's the danger that Nebraska is walking into again mm -hmm. in this next uh, this, the, these ne this next set of decisions that need to be made is that there is not, and it's hard to imagine it happening anytime soon, a unified vision, um, you know, agreement about how all of this should look and what you end up with even when you have this short period of time, like November of 2022, where it all looks like everything's great and they're all on one stage taking up taking a picture, even when that's the case, you know we've learned now that it can just it can be a facade, and you know what looks real isn't always real. And I think the the, the reason for it is because there's so there's so many people who care so much, and and a lot of them have have competing interests. That's Mitch Sherman from the Athletic. Mitch, we appreciate it. Really good stuff there. Um, I'm sure you'll stay busy. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Mitch. Yep. Thanks, guys. More Herd at Sports Radio coming up next. We're halfway through the show here on Herd at Sports Radio and 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. Well, well, we're live on KF. <laughs> no, we're not live on KFOR until nine o'clock. I don't know what time it is. Uh, we're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. Um, yeah, still talking about Trev Alberts and probably will be for most of the rest of the show. But coming up at 8:45. We're going to talk to Brian Edwards, get a little gambling in there. And at 945, we're going to talk to head coach Amy Williams about the women's basketball team at Nebraska. Am I naive? Because I'm not doom and gloom. I don't I don't directly correlate anything with Coach Rule. So I I was concerned about that. That is something that crossed my mind. But and this may be dumb. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. After he sent out the tweet last night with the video about being a caretaker, I kind of like, oh, he's taking ownership of this place. It's he, what he wants. Yes. I mean, you talk about a guy that enjoys power. Kind of like Mitch said, I think he came here because of Trev Alberts and, and Ted Carter. I don't think that is the reason he stays here. Yeah. And I know the struggle that it was. And I'm, this is not to say he's not going to do it again. And I don't even know why we're having this conversation because I think we're selling him short, number one. Like, I I think he would say, uh, you know, I I understand the, the, you know, the trepidation. That's what he, but <laughs> I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think that things are intertwined. Does his, does his boss matter? Sure. Yes. But, but I think he would tell you he's got a job to do. Here's the other thing about, he's, he's pretty far away right now to be cranking out like beautiful edits like yeah that. the incredible videos that make me feel okay inside um <laughs> one of the things that i think that i've thought about in this process and, and it's one of the reasons and i don't know trev personally obviously but it's one of the reasons i was disappointed in the way this played out with trev was i feel like the i feel like being so swayed by who is in leadership ahead of you mm -hmm. is that's frustrating for me, right? Because you, that's not something you have control over. 
right? Trev doesn't have control over who the president's going to be. Trev doesn't have control over the Board of Regents. Trev doesn't have control over those things, right? And while those things affect how he can do his job, I tell this to people in their corporate lives and whatever all the time. You need to try and get yourself into a position where you have job security and you have autonomy over your own position regardless of who is in leadership ahead of you. And I know it's not that simple because things interact, right? But yeah, I but remember, he's also the same athletic director that, I mean, was going to be uniquely positioned to have to answer to the president. I mean, it was going to be Ted Carter, Trev, and yeah. Coach Rule. And I, I get that. Overseeing that. You know what I mean? But we don't – he didn't even wait to see who the president was going to be. Yeah, but uh, – like, that's where I have kind of an issue, right? Like, if you get in there and, and there's a president and you're like... What are the odds that's going to happen? I mean, you gotta you got to be talking about a fairly specific person that would sign off on that. Sign off on what? That, okay, I know this is kind of unique, but okay, this is the way you want to do it at Nebraska as a president. I'll do that. Sure. So we may have to get our priorities in order. Like, what's going to be the most important? Can somebody just say out loud, and maybe it's a regents issue, may, like, what's the most important job of the university president? What's the most important role for the chancellor? Mm -hmm. Because we know what they kind of are by definition, mm -hmm. but that sure isn't. It doesn't seem like that's the expectation level when you talk to folks that see things like this play out. Because we always want it to be something other than it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Like. You, you can be mad at the Board of Regents, and maybe you're right, but what if it's simply something as saying, okay, we're just going to say this out loud. This is what we're looking for. This is, this is how we think the role should play out with regards to the university, mm -hmm. and then everybody knows what we're dealing with. Because it seems like we're arguing and picking narratives from a moving target. We don't even know what the role, what we want the role of the president to be. We think we do, and sure. it's all it's always related to sports. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember, their admissions are way down. Mm -hmm. They're operating with a fiscal deficit. So the 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 person that comes in has to be uniquely equipped to understand the importance of athletics as it pertains to the front door of the university, mm -hmm. and work in conjunction with the academic side. There's a lot of university presidents that roll their eyes at the athletic component. I agree. I uh, know I agree 100% so, because I and I but N Nebraska's in a different spot because of the revenue it generates. It doesn't have to glad hand from the university because of the way that its athletic department is ran. So it's I think it's a little unique of a school in that regard. And so I, I maybe that's what makes it so hard. Put out a I put out a tweet yesterday, sort of in jest, but like kind of seriously, that you know, because the Board of Regents has taken a lot of heat over the last 24 hours, right? And I think some of it at least is deserved. I don't know if all of it is, but I think some of it is. Yeah, I'm just not I think they're a factor. Okay. I think they're a factor. That's it's fine. Let's go ahead. And I said if you want to if you want to win a Board of Regents seat in a landslide, campaign on the only issue of making Nebraska football and getting them back on track and forget all the other policy pushing. That's your, that's your platform. And and somebody responded and I, I mean, a lot of people responded, but somebody responded specifically, this isn't pro sports. The university doesn't exist for football. All banter aside, I want UNL to be a growing vibrant school. It's good for Nebraska and the Midwest. Hot takes like this are the issue. The regions aren't elected to win games. And I understand that, but, but, that discounts the impact that athletics have and can have. And can, the can, overall... can, the, can the University of Nebraska post COVID in 2024 function without success of its football? Well, without, that's the, without monetary that's the key. success from its football program. The the value that athletics have to the overall well being of a university is dramatically understated by a lot of academic types. And I'm not hating on academic types, right? But a lot of people that are either in board of regent seats. A lot of people that are in president seats at either Nebraska or other places continuously underestimate the impact of athletics on the overall health and well-being of a university. And I know it and you want to talk about declining admissions. One of the fastest ways to increase your admissions to win in sports is to be good at sports. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. We that saw, is we saw the boom in the 90s. 
I mean, Nebraska saw the boom in the 90s. Bama Alabama City. saw it. Yeah. Even places in a, such a small scale like FGCU, when they went, made their Sweet yeah. 16 run, I think the number was like 500% in terms of applications increase. This is not an isolated thing. This is a proven thing. The more you win at athletics, because that is the face of your university, whether you like it or not, unless you're Harvard or one of those types of schools, athletics is the face of your university. And so to say to bite off your nose to spite that face is dumb. Yeah. Because guess what? The rest of the body's not going to function real great without a face either. Do you guys want to get the white? Yeah, let's quick? get the white. Uh, Asian white, why don't you go ahead there? Hey, how's it going? Good, what, how you doing? What's up, buddy? Oh. Hey, sir, if I, if I uh, introduce some dark humor into the situation. No, it's good. Let's go for it. <laughs> uh, I just want to know, like, did at any point, did anybody pull out their phone and say, hey, Trev, let's look at this pregame speech again. Because, you know what? If we die, we die. We got to <laughs> keep on going with this. Yeah. <laughs> You kind of wanted to see that. You kind of wanted to see that yesterday, didn't you? Like, just hang in there. Yeah. It's like, because I'm from a fan, you know, it's like, you know, who hang on a low hanging fruit farm a lot. It's like, you know, picking up an apple. You're like, this apple is delicious. I'm enjoying this apple. And you feel a little soft spot in the back. You're like, oh, I'm going to keep eating this apple. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to turn it around, you bite into the apple, and then the whole thing is rotten. And that's what it kind of felt like. So you're, you're enjoying it one minute, and the next minute, it just, it's, it's all bad. Um, but I do want to ask too, do you think, uh, cause I know it'll depend on who's hired for, you know, you know, for president and all that. Do you think there's enough, um, uh, where foundation where rural loves Nebraska to at least set that foundation? Yeah, I, I do. I like my, my first concern wasn't that, that coach rule was leaving Wyatt. Like I feel, I mean, he's investing in his family being here. Yeah. So, so I mean, they, they like it. Like it a ton that 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 matters to him, I think, at this stage in his career, because you talk about somebody that you know, doesn't need money. Yeah, he's OK. Uh, coming up next, we've got uh, we've got uh, Brian Edwards from Vegas Insider, MajorWager.com. See if we can make a little money this weekend on here on here on Herd at Sports Radio. Wrapping up hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities as well as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. want to remind you real quick that the Omaha Supernovas are back in town tonight at the CHI Health Center, and you need a little distraction from all this Nebraska AD talk, go check out the Omaha Supernovas at CHI Health Center at 7 p.m. Go to supernovas.com for tickets, schedule information, as well as anything else you need to know about your hometown professional volleyball team, the Omaha Supernovas. That's tickets available at supernovas.com. Joining us now on the... Uh, stream yard with us is Brian Edwards, Vegas Insider, Major Wager. Brian, how are you this morning? Good morning, gentlemen. What's happening? Hey, uh, is Nebraska, when do they play? They don't play till tomorrow? The Friday night. Uh, yeah, tomorrow night. Okay. Who do they get the winner of? Uh, I uh, should so, know. Uh, Penn State, Indiana. Penn State, yeah, Penn, Penn State, State and IU. Okay. Which gotcha. is doable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I, I, I like that draw. I don't know. I, I keep saying Penn State bugs me. I hope it doesn't come back to bite me. Yeah, but even if it's Penn State, stop it. Third game in three days. Come on. All right. They've they've done it before. I get that, but it's not. That's a that's not an easy task. All right. I I just lack courage. Baby. That's all. <laughs> Penn You're State. Up. Hey, what what'd you do with your Poye winnings the other day? I, I did uh, you buy did you buy yourself well, something nice? Maybe went to Applebee's. No, I lost them on Gilbert Burns and Kevin Holland. <laughs> <laughs> but but because I lost on Holland and um and Burns, who and Burns was winning by the way, gosh. But uh, I I actually muscled up a little more on Dustin because of that. But that was really just to kind of break even for the night. But yes, Dustin was very good to me. I needed that. Penn State was very good to me last night. Penn State and Georgia. Um, I felt like that was kind of stealing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that, I mean, it almost looked too easy with Penn State, um, but it came through. Thank goodness. I needed I needed Penn State in Georgia last night. When it got to be 58-50, you're like, see, I should have known. I get his back door all the way. Nah. <laughs> Penn State was like, nah, B, we got you. Yep, yep. Forge, forge ahead. Do you like these early morning slates, or do you feel like Cappers and, and or Vegas stay sharp? 
I like them. I like them. Um, well, I mean, like, it's kind of too early to tell. We're probably going to see a lot of line movement here in the next hour or, or definitely going to, in the next two hours, see some line movement. Uh, I, I feel like the lines haven't really moved that much, uh, at least not early this morning. Is that when you like to try to catch them? You know, get on the right side of the line regardless of the outcome? No, I, I like to get it early. Like, I'm afraid they're going to move the other way against me. So, um, and I'm trying to think of yesterday's games. Um, nah, not, nothing really. Pretty, pretty good? Yeah, yeah. Um, the lines didn't move against me yesterday. In fact, I, I um, heck, I played Georgia minus three, and they ended up moving to two and a half. A loss on Syracuse, I bet them minus two, and they ended up at uh, one or one and a half. So, uh, they did not move. Or I guess I didn't get ahead of them yesterday. Um, I'm hoping that Boise and Nevada uh, will move because I'm in at the good number. I think mm. right now is that uh, B. So you like that minus 120 on the money line? Is that the number you like, or is there any leeway there? But yeah, no. I mean, or, or minus one, um, minus one, or minus 120 money line. Yeah, either or. Um, I, look, Boise's playing great. I don't know if you guys watched that San Diego State game last Friday, one of the best games I've watched uh, all season. And New Mexico is kind of limp down the stretch. Now, they beat Air Force yesterday, uh, but that was to avenge a home loss to Air Force as an 18-and-a-half point favorite like a month ago. And New Mexico lost 6 of 10 straight up and against the spread to close the regular season, whereas Boise uh, finished the regular season 6-1 and one both straight up and ATS, and they won five of those six by double-digit margins, and they've owned the Lobos lately. They won both uh, regular season meetings this year. They've won three in a row and um, have also uh, won seven of the last eight head-to-head -head with the Lobos. So a uh, big fan of Boise State in the late, late-night game, uh, well past midnight tonight. <laughs> Uh, you're going to go, well, it's not too late, but it'll be off schedule by then. It's an eight, it's an 8 PM central tip. Uh, you like Nevada against a very dangerous Colorado state team. Just land the three. Yeah. Nevada is absolutely on fire right now. Seven straight wins four by double digit margins, six and one ATS during that seven game, uh, winning streak. And in their last, or just since the start of February, Steve Offord's team, 10 and 1 straight up, 9 and 2 ATS, including road wins at Utah State, at UNLV, you know, where they'll be playing tonight at Thomas and Mack, at Colorado State, at Boise State, swept the season series uh, from CSU, uh, beat them by 13 in Reno. Um, and uh, Colorado State, it, I, I like to call them the big boys of the Mountain West. In other words, we eliminate Wyoming, Air Force, Fresno. Uh, I think I might be forgetting one of them. Uh, but anyhow, Colorado State's lost three in a row and four of the five, four of last five against the big boys of the Mountain West. So a loss at UNLV, New Mexico, San Diego State, and the aforementioned loss uh, to Nevada. Give me the Wolf Pack tonight, minus three. Uh, moving into major conferences, uh, the maybe least favorite team around Nebraska right now, Texas A&M, minus five versus Ole Miss. Uh, what do you like there? Yeah, I like A&M here. Um, Ole Miss has just been awful here uh, down the stretch. So, um, Pretty bad in conference play in general. Yeah, yeah, and, and they loaded up with non-conference, you know, cupcakes. So mm -hmm. let's see, they're one and they're two and eight in the last ten, uh, both straight up and ATS, uh, including a twenty-six point loss at home to these Aggies. Uh, now, you know that doesn't mean it's going to translate to the same result uh, here, but I will go. Uh, a and M minus the five, whereas you know A and M has won uh, three in a row, uh, including that win at Ole Miss. They beat uh, Mississippi State. They won by fourteen uh, at Georgia, and uh, obviously uh, urgency doesn't necessarily translate to success. But A and M, uh, you know, right there is either you know that first team out or last team in, and a lot of bracketologist uh, latest uh, projections. Kind of a strange line here. Hard team to figure out, but our very own Hunter Salas uh, and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons favored uh, over Pitt. I, I kind of get it. I would have probably made it 
a a pick them, but that line would lead me to believe, man, you got to play Wake Forest, don't you? Not me. I um I like how Pitt's playing. They are uh, nine and two. Why, why do you think Wake is favored? Uh, yeah, I, that's a good question. I I, I don't know because <laughs> you're, you're not falling for it. So you're going to get the plus points, aren't you? Yeah, because I like Pitt. But well, I, I you know Wake did beat Pitt by 33 um, at home, but, you know, Pitt beat them at home or, you know, at at Pittsburgh. So, um, and look, Wake's just been dynamite uh, at home other than that bad loss they had like a week and a half ago. Uh, But I I just think Pitt's playing really well right now. Um, 4-0-1 ATS last five. uh, And then going back, what is it? Let's see, five. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, let's see, is that 10 or no, nine, one and one, uh, last 11 against the spread. Just, uh, Pitt's playing really well right now and I think they should be favored. So I'll, I'll take the plus two. Yeah. Maybe it'd be a deal last night where I wondered why Stanford was favored over Cal and Cal proceeded to score. Like, <laughs> I, I think like seven points in the last 19 minutes, I think it was 63, 47 and it went to 69 all in overtime. Like I, I, so maybe maybe they think you know Waco late played dead. Um, B, you've got something after my own heart here, which is a parlay. You've got what do you've got for there for your uh, for your plus money parlay? Yeah, so uh, this is just favorites. Uh, let's go with Baylor uh, to win outright. Uh, let's go with Creighton to win outright. Let's go with AM to win outright. Let's go with the Gators to win outright. You're and that should, that should get back about plus 250. Okay. And and um I, I don't know if y'all saw I snuck in a little late DM DM. Yeah, I, 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 I like that too because I kind of like BYU um yeah. as a as a team, but land what two and a half or, or three against and, yeah. Texas Tech? Yeah, I, I watched BYU yesterday. Now, it is one of those, you know, back-to-back spots where the other team uh, is rested. But I had BYU yesterday. Uh, they, they beat UCF by 14, jumped all over them early, and UCF stormed back and cut it to three. But right when they cut it to three, BYU darted back to a double-digit lead. Uh, BYU has uh, won four of its last five, going 5-0. and ATS uh, in that stretch. The only loss was at Iowa State. Uh, nobody won in Ames uh, this year. They only lost by five and covered uh, in Ames. And uh, got a win at Kansas. Uh, beat TCU by double digits. Beat Oklahoma State by double digits. Beat UCF by double digits yesterday. I just like what I'm seeing uh, out of BYU here. So uh, give me the Cougars and BYU's in revenge mode. They lost at Texas Tech in their lone uh, head-to-head meeting, but Texas Tech was really tough at home this year. Yeah, and it'd be quick, interesting to see Texas Tech have to turn around and guard the post after playing against Kansas last night, who go, got almost zero paint touches unless it was a layup. Like BYU makes you guard the post. Oh yeah, and and they're balanced. I I, I was looking at their. I, I think it's six guys average at least nine points per yep. game. So a lot of balance. Uh, I like their bigs, uh, and they can shoot it. So uh, give me the Cougars. That'll be right during your tuna milk sandwich over lunch. Be twelve thirty for you. Yes, I uh, man, we got bets and ball games all day <laughs> and night. I love it. I love it. That's Brian Edwards, our Vegas insider, MajorWager.com. B, we appreciate your time as always. Catch up with you next week. All right, fellas. Uh, thanks. Y'all have a, a great week and weekend. Kicking off hour number three here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM five ninety, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're also on KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well. A reminder, if you're driving, use your seatbelt. It saves lives and prevents injuries only if it is properly worn. Make it click this message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Joining us now is our friend from Husker 24-7, Michael Brunts. Brunts, what's going on? Nothing. Anything going on, guys? No, nothing. I was, Bruncey, at any point, do you know, I was, I put on my track shoes yesterday. I, I changed into my little ankle socks. I put on my running tights. I was almost ready to do a victory lap yesterday after taking a stand saying that I didn't think our athletic director was going to leave. And then immediately I put on my old man smock 
I sat on my couch and I felt like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're gonna in, in the old old school '90s wrestling. You're gonna do the Barry Horowitz and pat yourself on the yes, back yes. Up the big pat. I yeah. was like, I I was like, cooler heads, let's go. Like I can, I it's yes. I was past the window that I was worried about, and yep. And then about four forty-five. Tell you what, about <laughs> it's actually about four. I was like, uh, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Is that about right for you? How was your day yesterday, Brunts? <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> it, it's like I, I don't have any running, running taste, by the way. <laughs> I don't believe. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. What, what's it? By they're the way, neon. You know they're neon. They're from yeah. the nineties. Yeah. Oh, oh, sure, sure. What's, what's an old man? What's an old man smock? It, it's a, it's a white robe with like you'd get at at at, at like a hotel. Okay, terry, it, is it terry cloth? Yeah, terry cloth it it actually <laughs> is. We're like kind of the little fuzzy nubs don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, thank okay. you. Well, I listen. I'm a fashionista, right? People like my my <laughs> my Omaha zip up today. They think I'm I'm being passive aggressive, passive aggressive, but I'm not. I, I I wore Omaha for my dad this morning. That's all. So I have my my I have my Mavs zip up, Bruncey. I'm looking sharp. I I tell you, sharp. It's GoMavs.com. I like it. Um, <laughs> yeah, GoMavs.com. <laughs> um, Brunt, So um, let's start with the Matt Rule of it all, because let's be honest, that's the thing I care about most in this situation at this point. Uh -huh. He's shallow. He's really shallow, Bruncey. Yeah, I am. People know this about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> should see my clothing budget. Yeah, I'm pretty shallow. Um, <laughs> Brunts, I as you kind of go through this, I know the initial fear for a lot of people, myself included, was uh, was okay. What does this mean for Matt Rule? And then I don't know why, but he he sends out this tweet last night with a video that made me all warm and fuzzy inside, and made me feel like he's staying here forever, and we're never going to lose again. Um, what what was yesterday like for you in terms of processing the implications for Matt Rule in the football program? Yeah, I mean that's that's the big question. And um, I, I I feel bad for Matt Rule. I mean, you're you're over in Scotland. You, you get like what like five days off um, in in the spring, and you're you're playing golf uh, in Europe, and all hell breaks loose at home. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what does it mean for Nebraska football? I mean, it, it's uh, you you get worried initially because. You, you finally felt like and, and still feel like, because I don't think anything has really changed as it relates to Nebraska football in the last 24 hours. You've, you've got somebody, you've got an adult with their finger on the button there and, and somebody that is not, uh, I, I don't think by nature, a, a person that's going to immediately go to, Oh, well, what, what does this mean? I mean, I, and, and just feel, you know, like, like the sky is falling even if he was caught off guard by it, which I suspect he probably was. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the number one question is, is how do you keep the, mo the forward momentum going as it relates to the football program? Uh, and, and that's going to be the challenge for whoever follows Trev Alberts is, is how, do you, how do you kind of keep things going forward? Because let's be honest, I mean, the, the – the, the thing that causes the most stability right now in college athletics is having a successful football program. There's no question about that. And it, it's tough because for the next person coming in, you're also going to be, I, I mean, goal number one, two, and three is going to be making sure that football is, is on a good, a good trajectory, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, cause for better or worse, the, the perception is, okay, Trev left the football program in a good place. And then whatever happens afterwards is going to be is going to go on the tab of that next person. So, you know, I, I don't I don't think anything materially changes right now. I think Matt Rule needs to have a pretty strong voice in whatever direction things go in that athletic department. And the other thing too, I, I mean, right now you have an interim NU president, you have a UNL chancellor that is not involved with athletics in any kind of reporting way right now. I mean, Matt Rule is, is, is basically the, the power vacuum right now over there. And yeah. I, I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing, to be honest. Let me ask you something, Brunson, because you, you just gave me a little segue. So I was talking about this kind of this identity crisis of 
maybe we're not setting a clear expectation of what we want our the role of the president to be, what it should be, what it's designed to be. And is the relationship of the president having the direct relationship with its athletic director, which Nebraska lobbied for a year ago, unique to Nebraska? And so I have a uh, my, my buddy, he says, just reverse the process. Go back to the 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 chancellor going with the athletic director in that communication and move the role back to the president to oversee the academia world does that make sense to you or why do you think there's been such a disconnect between the president chancellor the the ad and and the the functionality of sports at nebraska well, I mean, that's a that's a big that's a very big question. Well, you're um, you have a very big brain. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's look at the big ways, brain on Brunts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of alliteration. It's it's uh, I mean, it's a personality thing. I think in some ways, I think it's probably egos. I think it's uh, it's been a continuity issue. I mean, that this this is you know kind of kind of goes back to the same issue that you've had at Nebraska over the last twenty years. Is you just You've been unable to keep any kind of continuity and, and actually build something. And I think that's probably, you know, a little bit the, the most disappointing part of it was you felt like, you know, you, you got a guy that was, you at least thought from the outside was probably going to be here a while um, and, and could kind of build this thing. And, and you started to kind of see the bricks get laid a little bit over the last couple of years and what this could potentially look like. Um, I, as, as it, as, kind of going back to the question though of like the the line of of reporting and who goes where that that to me always kind of felt like a little bit more driven by who it who was there in the position rather than the position itself yeah we we we, so we wanted some guys to be involved and we didn't want other guys so we're like oh okay if that guy's there then let's do this right we right we kind of jerry-rigged it as we went along if you're on the border regions would you feel would, would that bug you like for to make a special concession for the interactions and the reporting that that Trev and Ted wanted with athletics? Would uh, you would you feel like you're doing your job as a regent? Um, I, I don't uh, probably not. I don't I don't know that I would I would probably think similarly to, to current members of the border region in some ways. I mean, I think it, it, it's a tough question because like I said, I mean, it felt much more like we finally got the people in those places that we feel really good about, have a good feel of this stuff. And we feel like they're going to be around a little bit. And then, <laughs> you know, what, what you got eight months with, 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 uh, with, with Carter rule and, and uh, uh, Trev Alberts all in one place. Like, I mean, that, that, that to me is the thing that I keep going back to is like, okay, well now you've kind of, back yourself into a little bit of a corner here because yeah. you're trying to hire an AD with an interim president. And, you know, that's been going on forever. It, it's just a, a mess right now. I, a I, whole mess. I feel like we made some concessions because of the people and the, yeah. and their, and the, the roles got, the roles got mixed up. So now that those people aren't in place, it's like, well, I did you a solid. You guys couldn't even hold up your end of it. Why would I do you, another favor let's just get more traditional and get more of a yeah. traditional you know what i mean like yeah. i i'm yeah. just i'm just trying to see this from have a more another angle structure. because you know why Bruncy? i don't want this to happen again so maybe right. we need to redefine what roles are supposed to be and then say okay do we need to tweak this because of the unique interaction between the success of nebraska's athletic department and right. our enrollment numbers yeah, I mean, it, it It needs to be, I think, a reimagination of where athletics fits into the whole ecosystem of Nebraska, yeah. right? Like, I, I think that there needs to be a little bit more consensus on kind of what that is. I mean, it's if, if you look at it by itself, it's like athletics is almost like its own campus in some ways mm-hmm. with the money that's involved, um, what it just what it means for the public face of the university. Um, and, and then I, I think you act, you know, kind of based on that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a stretch to say that you have to view things a lot differently in 2024 than you did in, in 2014. I mean, college athletics is so different. It's going to look even more different in, in three, 
three to five years. I mean, I, I think you need to at least be willing to accept that you're going to have to probably deal with it in a different way. And maybe not in the, in the traditional way that, that, you know, we kind of know or, or have known in the past, but I think it needs to be reflective of the fact that Nebraska has to be able to be a little bit more nimble. You, you have to, you, you can't afford to kind of let that, that part slip because at a place like Nebraska, if you start slipping um, in, in the way college football and, and college athletics is going, I, I don't think you want to be slipping into the back of the pack there. Yeah. That's just not a, not a good thing. It'd be a lot less hand-wringing, I think, if we just defined what the roles and the expectations are. Then we at least could all debate and argue and because then and, you have and, a better and, idea and crab who's... at each other of what like what our frame of reference should be. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, no, it's fair. That's a very very fair take. Uh Bruns, do, you, do you think this serves as a lesson maybe moving forward whether it's for the board of regents, whether it's for the president, chancellor, whoever or just as a general public that we should be very careful about making concessions especially when in regards to structural changes? when it's because we like a certain person as opposed to because it's a good idea for the general organization. Well, we got burnt. We just got burned by it. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, but do you I, think I, people I, are going <laughs> to, but do you think people are going to actually learn from it? That's the, that's the question. That's the only way we keep it from happening again. Right. But are I, we I going know. to keep from happening again? That's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, you would you would hope that there would be lessons that have been learned from the last two decades of of the way things have gone, and I think in some ways there there have been, but um, I, I don't know. It it just seems like uh, you, you got to get people close to the same page, and I don't think you're ever when you're involved with the university system, it's a huge animal. There's a lot of people there, a lot of egos, a lot of power. Um, you you got to get people close to pulling in the right direction, and. I, I think you kind of had that for a little bit, but I, I think I think there are some lessons that you kind of have to take away here. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the unfortunate part is, is I mean, you, you just you don't have the people in permanent positions right now. I feel like to to do anything about those lessons. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it just feels. I, I I don't know about you guys, but everything right now just feels like it's in a really really kind of rudderless holding pattern right now. I wonder so. Can, let me just go back to something. Because, again, I'm in the solutions business, so I always ask myself, how did we get here? Brunt, humor me on this. What happens if when Nebraska went through the painstaking deals, right, they just re-upped Ted Co It's weird. Like, both guys that just signed new deals leave relatively soon thereafter. But Ted Carter inks a, a, a new extension, right? And let's, and let's say Nebraska's – Budget cuts aren't happening, and fiscally their admissions are in better shape. Do you think he would have probably gotten less pressure about – because I could just see people saying, well, why are you so worried about what's going on in athletics? Do you see what's going on from an academic standpoint with our campus and, and budget cuts? Like where they, maybe he was like – I could see people laying a guilt trip or being displeased because – that's not what his role is supposed to really be doing that helps start this thing in motion. And then we overcorrect that helped us get to where we got to last week when Trev was first being courted by AM. Is that a thing, in your opinion? Uh, lots on unpack there. So you're asking if. If, if things have been different with. The, the Fiscally, on, on an academic level. Do you think the Carter thing could have seen a little longer tenure? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would maybe a little bit. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think people need to remember that, you know, a, apart from the academic, from the athletic stuff, I mean, a, a, a university like Ohio state comes and approaches you um, that that's, that's a big deal regardless of what's happening here. Um, however, I mean, I think there's things that, that, that caused some instability there, um, you know, that, that were going on in the state. And also, I mean, just, just the campus itself. I mean, it, the, the, the campus is kind of, and, and UNL is battling a lot of the issues that a lot of places around the country are battling with enrollment and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I, I, I think there's, there's things that probably, uh, 
had him looking around a little bit more than he would have otherwise. But I, I don't know. It, it, it always kind of felt to me um, that I, I don't know how long for Nebraska he really was. Like it felt like it, it, there was like one more kind of thing that was out there for him still. And I guess maybe that was the case with Trev too. I mean, I, I, I think maybe he had a little bit more, um, you know, want to, to, to go for something a little bit bigger or different than maybe what a lot of people have expected based on the fact that, you know, he's, he's from Iowa, you know, went to Nebraska or is, is, you know, has been in the area for so long. So I, I think that kind of played a role too. Brunts, are you surprised that that one more thing from Trev was another AD role? Because I think a lot of us would have been less kind of shell-shocked if the news is, always oh, going to be a conference commissioner. He's going to run the college World playoff committee or something. But, like, I think is part of the shock that this mostly seems lateral. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that's part of the shock. I think I think the wear is a shock. Um, I don't know. I mean, does does the does going to a place like A and M and and kind of being in that orbit of the SEC does that open more doors for you um, with those other things? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not in a position to hire those but it, i mean maybe a little bit different level of experience outside of the state might have mattered i i think that might be a small piece of it i don't i don't think it's just one or two things with this decision either i mean i, I think you know part of it's the university structure um i, I don't think it's the only thing and yeah i mean i i think the shock i i think part of it was just the ripping the band-aid effect of it of you know you, you get the report really quickly at 9 a.m that oh it's it, he's leaving and it's a and m um yeah i mean i i, I think a lot of the the people that i talked to some of the shock has been too of like really like you want to sign yourself up for that like you know if, if you think you know there there's power issues <laughs> and, and meddling and things like that here um good you know, luck in texas yeah yeah so i think that's part of it too you know in terms of shock and and you know why that location over others is maybe a surprise All right, so let me change gears real quick talk baseball here for a second if you you saw the final number of eight i think it was eight arms used last night um and obviously it you know being down nine nothing doesn't help what do you <laughs> think the original design was for arms used in a midweek game against wichita what like yeah. what would it have been five? Would it have been six? Would it have been four? Yeah, it's uh. By the way, if you're gonna lose, if you're gonna give up nine in the first two innings yesterday, <laughs> was probably a good day to do it, right? Yeah, a little distracted. <laughs> yeah, talk about coming out in a haze. There's a baseball game going on. Yeah. So, um, no, I, I think I think probably the goal would have been to get Harahill as far as he would have gone. Mm-hmm. and then back, back him up with those guys. I mean, I, I'm sure they probably used an arm or two that they would not have used otherwise behind him if things had gone a little bit better. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I ideally maybe you get through three, maybe four, um, just kind of based on how, how that would play out and, and stress pitches and all that other stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you're not going to win many games giving up nine runs in the first two, but uh, the other guys that came in behind him, I mean, you yeah, gave what- up what? Two hits, three hits, and no runs. So that that's something. What would you do with Clark right now? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, you know, the Sunday roll. I don't. I, that that was more. I think of a situation where you needed a fourth guy because it was on the four day weekends or four game weekends. Um, you know, the I, I don't know that that the you know the 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 relief role has always been the best for him. I mean, I. I think he's maybe at this point where you kind of give him a week or two off and kind of see uh, who else you can throw in there. I mean, the problem is, you know, they don't have a ton. They've, they've got a few lefty arms that you can go to out of the bullpen, but they're not particularly deep there uh, outside of Perry and I guess Clevenger also. Oh, we uh, saw a little bit last and, night. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he's got good stuff. I'd be, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of him, but um, I mean, that's, that's the one thing is you just don't have a ton of, left-handed arms that you go to that can give you, you know, maybe two innings of relief if you need it. So that that's why I think they got to be a little bit careful with how they handle that. Brunts, uh, reason for concern after last night at Wichita State or just kind of a one-off in your mind? Uh, just a one-off. I mean, I yeah. even even the, the Tuesday night game, I mean, 
it was eight to six. It got a little tight late, but I mean, you leave 14 guys on base. I mean, it was, it, that, that had blowout potential. Mm-hmm. If you had a couple, uh, couple hits here and there that they didn't get, but, um, you know, you, you look at, you know, what you're trying to do early in the year before you start conference play. I mean, they, they got one road win out of the two against Wichita state, which with the way RPI is factored actually is, is a net win for them. And you've got an, a really good nickel state t- team coming in this weekend. I mean, it, you, you kind of start digging in a little bit and Nebraska's actually played a really tough schedule. Yeah, it's, I through, agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Through the, through the first month of the season. And I mean, that's why they're a top 10 RPI team right now is a lot of those teams that they've played and won against uh, many on the road are, are going to be good at the end of the season. Yeah. I was telling, I think, I don't know. No, it wasn't you. Cause you wouldn't have just said that, but I think it was Ravi last week. These early series, these these are going to be like at worst probably quad two wins and some quad ones. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's as a North team, you're just trying to stack road wins early on. Win series, yep. Yeah, I mean you you split with Wichita, you're okay with that. I mean they're still going to go to Kansas, which they're playing good baseball. They're in the Big Twelve, which is going to help with the RPI for them too. Um, You know, I I think they they really kind of took the lesson from last year to heart in terms of scheduling and you know the that's half of it the other half is is you got to win some of those games and they've also uh, been able to do that too so you know the 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 thing too i mean they've they've played three home games um you know they they, i think they're home for the next eight so they've got a chance to beat some good teams at home and and uh you know get a little bit more momentum because we're really close to the start of conference play already which is crazy i asked you last week the team that made the playoffs that won't make it this year in baseball and i think you talked marlins and diamondbacks and i said yeah, oh i thought you might say the brewers definitely yeah, say the brewers because yeah, w- williams is on the shelf <laughs> i was texting you to him, like it's definitely the brewers yeah. <laughs> wow appreciate it Brunsy. see you guys that's michael Bruns, rusker 24 7 we will be back with Herd at Sports Radio coming up next. We're back here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN, Omaha, ESPN, Tri-Cities, KFOR, and Lincoln. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And I want to remind you, it's your last day to get entries qualified for the Warhorse Casino Million Dollar Bracket Challenge. March 14th, today, is the last day you can earn entries for that. You can do so by placing a $50 sportsbook wager or by getting 50 points on slots and racing. You also need to be a Warhorse Rewards member. Million dollars for a perfect bracket. Even if you're not perfect, still $10,000 in prizes for the top brackets, including weekly prizes. You'll be able to make your picks once the brackets come out on Sunday, and then you'll need to go activate your entries at Warhorse Casino in Lincoln. Tomorrow, I'm going to start telling you about the prop card challenge because you can still qualify through that for that through the end of the month. That's Warhorse Sportsbook. No bets, no glory. Go to warhorsecasino.com if you have questions or need more details. It's not where you want to prop me up or no? Huh? Oh, prop so card challenge? No, that's guy. a different thing. Man. It's more like, you're talking more like, you know, like build me up buttercup. You know, the new the, the foundations. Like, this is a little different. Wait a minute. Prop, prop card challenge. Build me up who? Yeah, you're familiar with the song? No. Why do you build me up? But a cup, baby, just to let me down. No, I know the song. I did not actually pay attention to the words. That's what. That's what. Well, I mean, we did the Snoopy and Sloopy thing earlier too. So it's. I think lyrics may not be like your strong suit. <laughs> or retention. <laughs> you know. Man, uh, sometimes I. Sometimes I hear. Sometimes I listen. So just depends. we're going to talk to head coach Amy Williams of Nebraska women's basketball at nine forty-five. Before that, though, um, I think it's time for a little hurt at hot seat. Normally, I put DB on the hot seat. I go out there, come up with some questions, try to try to turn up the heat a little bit. I have a different person in mind for my hot seat question today, DB. Yeah, that's one Trev Alberts. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I, you know, I'm sure he's listening. He's not busy. Um, but I have a very important question for Trev. Yeah. What the f, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the f? What are we doing here? Yeah. This was not a long time ago. Listen, just, I, I don't know how else to put it. What the hell are we doing, Trev? This is not a long time ago. We we're talking about dream jobs. We're talking about this is a perfect place to be. We're talking about great leadership. This was after Ted Carter left, by the way. We're talking about 
all unity of vision and every, everybody's holding hands and singing kumbaya. This is not that long ago. This is November. Not that long ago. We're having this. This is after, that's three months after Ted Carter left. That's, you know, so that's a pretty good time. It's not like this was brand new here. Sitting there in November, going through these interviews, telling everybody how much he loves Nebraska, telling everybody how much, how great it is here. It's the perfect place. There's not a better job in the country. That's a quote. Not a better job in the country than Nebraska. 120 days later, He's on a plane to College Station, Texas. Read his announcement um, from to with a &M. What the F, Trev? Um, the announcement from Trev yesterday. I just call him Trev all the time. I don't know him, but I, I don't know why I do that. I don't say Mr. Alberts. That's fair. I should probably use his whole name because I've, I've I met say, him I say, I'd like say twice. Trev. I'd say Trev. Um, I would, if you hadn't just gone off and gone to Texas A&M, Trev, that wouldn't please me more. Uh, so his statement yesterday. So the, the anger's kicking back in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, what the F, man? I'm still disappointed. I'm disappointed, too. But that's why I said anger is a secondary emotion, right? It comes from somewhere else most of the time. Mm -hmm. Hurt, betrayal, trust issues. Well, I think at first. Disappointment. So sometimes when I, I you know, I just, I told one of uh, the Metro coaches earlier, like, he's like, you got to be pissed. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not pissed. I was hurt. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I always overthink it. It's like, well, this is because I'm hurt. Is that a selfish vantage point? Because no, I feel like it's just the emotion that I felt, but I'm not trying to cast that on, on him for making me feel that way. It's just the actions that he did mm -hmm. or whatever, however it transpired. That's how I feel. Well, and there's no because I don't. I think sometimes it. Sometimes people are like you're you're assigning intent, and they're and they'd be like, "Well, I didn't mean to hurt no. you." No, and you're like, well, "It doesn't." That's just what happened. Yeah, intent intent doesn't matter in the emotion it causes, right? It matters on how that's resolved. That's where intent matters. But if you're like you, because that's what people always say. Well, I didn't mean I didn't mean it like. Well, that. it's like, well, you did it anyway, so congratulations. I, I didn't mean it like that. You did a pretty good job on but, accident. But, but then it's hard because people will get into rationalizing how you received it. Well, I didn't mean to hurt you. This, 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 and this happened. Yeah, that's called gaslighting. That's what that is. It's trying to convince you that your feelings aren't valid. That's not. No, that's not. No, no, no. Get, hear me. Hear me out. Okay. So let's just use this example, mm -hmm. right? So yesterday transpired mm -hmm. and uh you know like you know i'm hurt mm -hmm. and trev says like hey this happened i had to do this 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 and this mm -hmm. that was not my intent i don't think that's gaslighting that's I, not no okay so get that's different than saying your feelings aren't aren't valid but I'll, I'll I'll say this because that's a slippery slope because just because something makes you mad mm -hmm. and I don't acknowledge your anger or the that you got mad about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gaslighting you. I just don't I just don't ag I don't agree with you. So we're going to agree to disagree. You're entitled to feel that way. I think I can say, like, if you so there's a very fine line there because you're right. There is a difference. Yeah, there is like 100%. But it's, but it's a super fine line. And you said something really important there because a lot of times because people don't like taking ownership of hurting other people, even if they didn't mean to. Right. You still have to take some ownership of, hey, my actions hurt people. Yeah, I think Trev needs to take ownership of my actions hurt people, whether he meant to or not, whether he still thinks it was the right thing to do or not. That's OK. But. The key thing you said right there is you're still entitled to feel that way. Yeah, like right? if, if, there, if but there's a very fine line between because most people can't make that distinction where between, hey, this is what happened. I didn't intend for this, but still acknowledging that the person is yeah, entitled yeah, to because, have those. Because what I would say is I can acknowledge your feelings. That's where it goes. But from. I don't have to perpetuate it. <laughs> no, you don't. Right. That yeah. would be like me being, you know, I, but Caleb, you don't have to invalidate them either. That's, Caleb, those are the, the kind of spectrums. Caleb, stop parking behind, stop parking behind me. I can't get out <laughs> this. And he parks on the other. This is just an easy example. Yeah, sure. Stop parking behind me. Yeah. So he parks behind me one day and, and I'm mad. Mm -hmm. So I don't say anything. I'm, I'm mad. He knows why I'm mad. I know why I'm mad. He may have only done, he may have done it for a couple of minutes because he's running to West Side. Yeah. 
at, at some point I have to acknowledge or I like I have to own the way that I feel. So I got to be like, was it intentional? Was it not intentional? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's extremely selfish to just say, well, I'm mad because I said this mm -hmm. without acknowledging the context in which it happened. It doesn't mean that I'm I'm not explaining. I don't, I don't believe in the way that I feel. Yes. It's just I have to understand how to manage it. And that's why because that because he's not going to say he's not going to come over to me if I'm pouting on the back deck or the kitchen table or whatever. And be like, dad, dad, you know, I didn't. He, at some point, he's going to be like, OK, like I did it. It's over. It's not that like move on. So there's 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 that. There is. Gap. But 100 percent. But not acknowledging any of those things is why people can't move on. Right. It's, that's why it's, I said it's, it's important. It's why they harbor the. That's why I said it's important in the resolution. Intent is important in the resolution. Like it's you can not, feel left at the altar. Yeah, but it doesn't resign you to the fact that you should feel a certain way about Nebraska. Right? right. And and that's how you move forward. Right? Is is the context and the intent. Um, I do want to read the the statement from Trev that he made yesterday because I do think it add, it sheds some light into my heard at hot seat yeah. question of that's, I didn't what even the let F you man. Read, I didn't even let you read it. That's okay. I'm not great at reading anyway. Um, Fudge, from, me neither. From my perspective, this is Trev. Uh, this is Trev making a statement uh, from being hired at Texas A&M. From my perspective, there has never been a more consequential time in history for higher education and the evolving landscape of intercollegiate athletics. Leadership matters now more than ever. Just going to let that sit for a second. Mm -hmm. My interest in Texas A&M is not only due to its prestigious rep reputation, but also because of President Welsh's compelling vision in which I believe athletics can play a small but important role in helping Texas A&M achieve unprecedented success. A couple really important things there. <laughs> Leadership matters now more than ever. I believe in the vision, the compelling vision of the president and athletics can play a small but important role in the success of the university. You want to see why Trev Alberts left? You want to want you want to know my question, the what the F man? Those are your three answers right there. Now, did he handle it right? That we can debate that all day long and I'm sure we will. But if you want your reasons, he gave you three. <laughs> We've got Amy Williams coming up next. <laughs> Wrapping up the show here on Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN, Omaha, ESPN, Tri-Cities, KFOR, and Lincoln. I want to tell you real quick as we get to Amy Williams here about our friends at Team Jack Foundation. TeamJackFoundation.org is where you can find out everything you need to know about getting involved with the Team Jack Foundation, their events. You can, you can donate directly uh, on the website. Over $12 million and counting in funds raised to help fight childhood brain cancer and one day find a cure that's teamjackfoundation.org. Joining us now is Amy Williams. She is the head basketball coach for the Nebraska women. Coach, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. One of my faves. How you been, coach? You doing all right? Hey, hey Damon. How are you? I'm great. So I've got to, I know you got to do business, and but you're a mom first. How fun has this whole Kennedy thing been? Like, it's unbelievable, right? You've gone through, you've run the gamut. I know. It's so crazy. I just, when I think about that, and um, we both have kids now that are going to be Huskers, it's unbelievable. But Air pretty, high five. pretty fun. Kennedy Kennedy plays her, um, her first soccer game tonight. So on to the next. So. <laughs> it never stops. Coach, how, I guess, how would you ha describe your year as a whole i know it's hard to kind of be retrospective when it's not over yet but i having coached before i know sometimes we take uh kind of take evaluation take stock between the regular season and the postseason if you were if you told yourself how it was going to play out before the season how would you have felt about it yeah um I would be really thrilled because um, the the one thing that's always a, a huge goal for us is to be able to be putting it all together and peaking at the right times. And, and certainly this season has, has had some, some tough losses and, and, you know, at times, you know, when we went in our non-conference schedule and lost at Kansas, um, I really felt like that was a reflecting point for our team where we really had to take a step back. We spent a long time in that locker room after that game and really kind of looking at how are we going to respond 
respond and um, and to continue to watch this team stay together and to continue to fight, to continue to work, to continue to stay playing with each other, for each other, um, to be able to overcome some of those tough challenges and to learn from them and, and, and really respond in a positive way to to be able to put together a really strong run here towards the end and feel like we're genuinely playing our best basketball down the stretch. That's exactly how any coach wants it to play out. Coach, it's interesting. You had to overcome some early season injuries. You, you, you negotiated and managed the depth and kind of how you play. Like, was that part of the process to get to where you guys want to be right now? You, you're not only battle tested on the court, but you're battle tested in the, the locker room as well. This looks like a super tight knit team. It is a super tight knit team. And and I could tell you since we've been home from the conference tournament, it's just been incredible from, it gives me chills to think about, but um, we're on spring break right now, but our kids said, you know, the first night we were back, they were all together at one of the houses having um, taco night and nacho bar and you know like um, the next day they were they were having bachelor watch party together <laughs> and you know like sometimes when you get to this time of the season and your kids are on spring break and you have a couple days off after four games in four days they can't run in separate directions fast enough just because you know we spend a lot of time together but it's a very tight-knit group that just is soaking up every opportunity they have to to spend together here down the stretch. And um, that's how you want it to be as a coach, for sure. We're talking with Amy Williams, head coach of Nebraska Women's Basketball. Coach, all right, true serum here. Just be honest with me. How much do you allow yourself to kind of look at some of the bracketology where people are projecting you? Like, <laughs> you, I know you look a little, be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd be lying if I if I didn't say that we we don't you know if we if I said we don't look at that I I would be lying we we are kind of constantly paying attention to to some of that bracketology even though we know that the NCAA committee is obviously um, you know slightly different than some of the bracketologists that you're going to see and you mm -hmm. know but I do feel like it's something that. Um, you know, we want to make sure that people are taking note of the things that are, are really important on our resume. And so that's something that, you know, we're, we're constantly kind of, um, you know, keeping an eye on and who the potential uh, matchups can be, I guess, we'll, uh, we'll be way more excited on Sunday night when we actually know what the preparation can look like and who have it firmed up about, you know, who we get to start preparing for. But in the meantime, it's kind of fun just to, just to kind of guess. So, <laughs> coach, I, you, you mentioned kind of potential matchups and I, are you one of those coaches that kind of looks at the eight to 10 teams that are sort of there and you kind of start mentally preparing for those or are you just, hey, let's wait for Sunday, see who we're playing and go from there? Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, you know, we've we've got a pretty good feel of, of, you know, we feel like we've made a pretty strong case to be able to to be at least talked about on a six line. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it. it, it you know, a lot of the brackets are anywhere between a six and an eight. And so you kind of look at some of the other teams that are going to be kind of in the nine, 10 lines and to be able to, um, to kind of get an idea of what type, you know, our, our video coordinator is, is busy, busy, just pulling all kinds of, um, working overtime. And, and yep. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yep. It's so. interesting coach. Cause and around here, the people make fun of me for always listening to coaches' press conferences. It doesn't matter the sport. I, I just a big press conference person because I always like to pit what I hear versus what I see. And Coach Bluter was animate. And I know there's some gamesmanship with her, and you guys have a ton of mutual respect for one another. But she's like, listen, Nebraska's a four seed at worst. And, I mean, she's pretty emphatic. And I felt like – I came back on the show on Monday and I was like, gosh, could you hear Coach Bluter with the ringing endorsement? And of course, everybody's like, well, that's because Nebraska takes her team to the wire. <laughs> but that's got to be part of it, right? And I understand it's about matchups, but you do play in a tough conference, uh, especially at the top, the Ohio States, the Michigans, the Iowas. Like, you got to feel pretty good about the program's growth and development as it relates to the conference, just based on how competitive you guys are. Right. Yeah. I feel, I feel really good about that. And, and, um, you know, coach Bluter has been doing this for a long time and, and, um, 
you know, she's seen a lot of different teams and a lot of different NCAA tournaments. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like that endorsement from her is, um, is really solid, but we just, we feel great about the way we've been playing down the stretch. Um, you know, seven and three in our last 10 games with, you know, wins over number two, Iowa, you know, wins over teams like Maryland, Michigan, Michigan state, who are all going to be NCAA tournament teams and really our only losses on the road at number two, Ohio state, the overtime loss, um, in the big 10 championship game to Iowa and a one point road loss at Illinois, you know, so we feel like, um, you know, up against several other NCAA tournament teams and, and, and teams that are, you know, really ranked in the top in the country. Um, we're, we're, we're being very competitive with that, and it gives us confidence that we can make another run in this next tournament. Coach, you've had a lot of young young folks step up and, and, and filling roles and pots and company. Alexis Markowski is, is on a whole nother level right now. I got you got to walk me through kind of this process of, I always call Jazz Shelley like the reluctant hero, right? Like she's capable and she has to do so many things for your team. And there were these spurts that she would score. And I'd be like, oh, come on, Jazz, you you can fill it up. And it did seem to be a little counterproductive to her nature because she's a sharer. Like how did you get all these pieces to kind of fit into a style? We know you've got the one-two punch with Alexis and Jazz, but, man, folks are filling in their roles nicely on the fly. Yeah, well, you know, I think it goes back to, Damon, what you were talking about earlier with just some of the early um, injuries and things that we had to walk through early. And, and, and sometimes just by nature, this is my has been my approach as a head coach is, um, you know, there's times where I could have played Jazz Shelley 40 minutes in our non-conference games and, and, you know, done some things differently. But you know, we tried very early um, to give opportunities to players like Natalie Potts and Logan Nisley and Jeff Petrie and Callan Hake and, yeah. and um, play very, very deep into our, into our lineup, into our bench in dif- different situations, different players. And it allows them to work through some of the, um, some of the, the freshman mistakes and things that happen. And then, so that they can be prepped and poised and ready to contribute. And I thought that's what really happened for us in the Big Ten tournament was we got such great contributions. You know, in our first game, I thought Callan Hake, she had a great tournament, but, you know, really came in as a sophomore and, and sparked us in our first game. And then, you know, the next game, no, Logan Nisley goes for 11 points in the third quarter and just sparked us. I thought Jess Petrie played huge minutes and in that game where Lex was in a little bit of foul trouble. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were just getting contributions from all over the place, but I, I really credit that to the fact that, you know, we, we were willing to, to work through that and, and, um, and maybe take some lumps a little bit earlier in the season as we work through getting those players confident and ready to go. Well, coach, we appreciate you joining us and I hope that people will join you for, the selection show watch party it's at 6 p.m. at PBA, right? Yeah, oh, doors open at six. I think the program, who's being emceed by Matt Coatney, will Uh-oh. be at six thirty. Uh oh. Selection show at seven. So <laughs> reel, reel it, reel him in, Coach. <laughs> I, I, yep, that's right. I, I love Coach. Get, get him there. Get him my best. Yeah. We'll, we'll go support. Best wishes. Thanks, Coach. Thanks so much, guys. Yep. Make sure you go out to PBA. Doors open 6 p.m. for the watch party for women's basketball selection show. That's the show for today. We will wrap up the week tomorrow here on Herd Sports Radio.